That's okay, because we'll play with it. We will? Maybe. Okay. All right. Anyway. You know what I, what I do know? What? You know in those renovating chateau shows and how we can't do that, because we can't. Do what? The renovating chateau shows on YouTube. Why can't we do that? We don't because have a we can't even fix this up. Yeah, that's pretty hopeless. Eh? Yeah. Anyway, okay, all right, let's, let's get started. Let's see what happens here. Oh gosh. It'll be fine. Hold on. No, it'll be fine. I don't know if it'll be really fine. Okay. Right, Maybe ready? it won't be. <laughs> all right. One, two, three, go. <laughs> go. Am I going first? I don't know. Happy holidays. Happy holidays, everyone. Happy non-denominational festive season to all of you. And for some of you, Christmas. So, and some of you, Hanukkah. And some of you, Kwanzaa. And some of you, non-denominational festive celebration of the equinox. Yes. All right. Oh, yes. So, and Happy New Year. Yeah. So uh, this is our final newsletter of the year. We wanted to share with you uh, year 2023 in review. We want to share about what's coming up for 2024. And just take this moment to connect all with all of you. So, where do you want to start? Well, the year in review. The year in review. Let's give an update on Nate. So, um, I, I know some of you know that my son uh, this summer had a staph infection that went into his back, into his, uh, and pressed on his spinal cord and rendered him paralyzed from the waist down. I want you all to know, first of all, thank you everyone who has been praying, has been sending um, messages of hope and concern and love and all of that has worked. Um, he had a miraculous recovery even now. Um, so it's been from June to now it's December. He's actually walking in August, he decided to go back to university, even though he was in a wheelchair. Um, and it's just been, it's, it's been an incredible journey for my son, for our family. And um, we feel really blessed. Um, he's in incredible recovery and he's walking. He likes to use a cane, I think, because he thinks it's cool. Um, but he, he's just, He's just a phenomenal kid and um, really grateful for all of his, uh, his doctors, his physical therapist, um, his university coaches. He's on a university football team and all the trainers and coaches that have uh, helped him in his recovery, including his, um, his football team and all of his friends. So. Okay. That's the update on our, on the, on our son. So. Um, so, so on the, on the, I guess on the, uh, you know, our organization, what's happening, what's going on in the world. I think really, um, 2023 was a, a really tough year globally, and we saw a lot of companies moving instead of moving towards growth, moving towards contraction, <laughs> and and the the tragedy in all this is that that you know a lot of those seeming wins dissipated because they weren't sustainable, they weren't uh, embedded, they weren't actually real win. They were just kind of like there was some energy moving the system forward. And when you remove that energy of change, everything just started rolling back. That's how you know it's not fragile. sustainable. Yeah, fragile. Yeah. Right, so because it's not it's it's not permanently embedded into the organizational into system. Into people's behaviors, yeah. into how people are seeing the world. It's just like, oh we're told to do this thing, okay we'll do it. Okay, now we're not told to do it, it will stop. So I think that's really what um, became apparent in twenty twenty three. Um, the other thing that happened is, as part of this, the whole, really, like much of the Agile movement collapsed worldwide. Um, you know, some areas were impacted much, much worse. Um, and that's what we're seeing is, and this is like, you know, in our view, this is well-deserved. And as hard as this sounds, you know, my, I keep on saying this, but probably about 90% of Scrum Masters and Agile coaches do not really understand how to add value. They're still imprisoned in this Agile mindset and they haven't moved beyond to understand that all of us, all of us, no matter what our role, whether a manager, coach, scrum master, product owner, is there to add value to the organization, right? And, and I think as long as we just keep on coming back to that, we'll be fine. But I think there's so much lost with, with, within the Agile community that in some ways this was well-deserved. As hard as it sounds and as painful as it is for many of us, and I'm, I'm sorry for anyone who's out there that's having challenges this year, we've been having challenges, 
um, that's kind of the norm for 2023, is that um, you know I think there's an opportunity for those of us who are ready to evolve to pick up and say, well, okay, great. Well, how do we create a shift? How do we really differentiate um, those who are doing good work to create sustainable change in the world versus those who are you know just kind of using a title to make some money and, and so on? I think, and I think you know if we're known for being controversial, so maybe I can say this, is that people who are not agile at heart, and I don't mean people, I mean organizations, traditional organizations that wanted agile for the agile benefits of saying that they're agile, but not really um, uh, having, or having a sustainable agile transformation or Which means in, not using the word agile and not using the word transformation. Yes. Well, and it's <laughs> and, and, and working in agile ways, which is a people-centric approach to, to working in these new evolutionary ways of working. And um, I, we've seen organizations for the past, I don't know, you know, at least seven years is, uh, since I've been here, um, wanting agile but not really embracing agile. You know, wanting agile in name only yet wanting to still keep the traditional oppressive ways of working. And so all, you know, I think that's where you, we've seen the fall of agile is because, you know, when, when things get tough, you know, the people that aren't really um, completely, you know, in that, you know, using agile for the evolutionary ways of working and making workplaces, um, you know, better, um, you know, they kind of just went back to their old ways of working. You know, if you really, if you really are embracing agile, um, you'll never stop doing agile. You know, you'll never stop being people centric. You'll never stop uh, living. The, the Agile Manifesto in, in, in working and in these new evolutionary ways of working. So, you know, it's like, you know, when, when things get tough, the, you know, that's how you know, you know, you can measure the metrics or the agile-ness of your team is when, when things get tough, do you revert back to business as usual yeah. or do you stay the course? Yeah, and, and just to just to dial back a bit here, as incendiary as my comments about the low level of qualifications of Scrum Master and Agile coaches, please understand we train thousands of people around the globe, including managers, Scrum Master, and Agile coaches, so we know what is happening worldwide. And these are the progressive people coming to our training, really go, oh my gosh, I didn't really understand what I was trying to do. So, so just to be clear, um, this is a data-based comment. It's not like just an opinion. Uh, so, so there we go. All right, um, so that's 2023. Anything else for 2023? No, it's been, it's, oh. it's been intense. And lots of personal growth. Lots of personal growth. And, and then more personal growth. I know. It's and been then great. to top it up, personal growth. It's well. like first you want transformation, and then you get transformation. And then you think, oh, I didn't ask for this. And then you remember, and then you go like, okay. And then you go through it, and then you're like, oh my God, it was the best thing that ever happened. Yeah. Okay, so 2024. So 2024 for us is. Kind the of, best year ever. Yeah, and it's really just birthed out of what happened in 2023. And I think the kind of the news headline for us is really a clarification in who we are as evolved to be. As you know, our, I as, hate as, when you say that. Oh, okay. I know. I'll deal with it. <laughs> is 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 uh, is is that we're focused on building evolutionary organizations. That's really what we're focused on. And that means, yeah, which, which is like kind of like not our a big why. shift. It's been our why the whole entire time. It's kind of right there under your nose. But what did you say? Like We've been, we've been really talking about yeah. this a lot. So it, it's kind of like for the past seven years, we've been... Build, developing other leaders to create change. And we've seen uh, our graduates, especially of our Cal 2 program, create really, really great change. And, Unbelievable. Yeah. yeah. So, so in, in our academy, people just, just uh, really just moving into profound um, depth and power of their leadership. So we're seeing, seeing that and Massive impact. shifts in consciousness. Oh, yeah. 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 So, so that, that's been great. However, we realize that um, really our superpowers of helping organizations transform goes beyond what our students have been able to master yet. So really the focus for us is, and I think this is kind of the news headline for us for 2024, 
is for returning back to consulting. We've done a little bit here and there, but primarily we've been focused on, on training. And so for, for, you know, for me, this feels really, really exciting and good uh, to really support those organizations that um, want to evolve to, to make that in a, actually make the journey. And we were talking to one organization this morning and you know, they're, they're investing in you know, team level stuff with agile, they're investing in organization redesign, they're investing in leadership growth and development, but it's all splintered, it's all fragmented. There's no holistic approach to understanding how to move the system forward. And, and you know, I guess my insight this morning talking to them is like, we've got the whole deal all the way from the inner depth of the human being and how the human ego functions and how to navigate it and how to overcome our, our adaptations in our nervous system and our challenging behavior patterns, sometimes called showing, personality. Yeah, and all showing the, up as an evolutionary leader. Yeah, all the way down to the strategy, the tactics. How do you actually materialize all the way from the change in, in how I function as a leader to how do we actually get the outcome and, and navigating build an the seeming paradox of change. Yeah, so, so that's super, super exciting for, for us is, is understanding that, that shift and we're looking for one to two organizations. We have a couple propping up that might work out, um, but one to two organizations um, to really help, help them flourish. So, so that's, that's kind of the news headline for mm -hmm. 2024. And we still will be partnering with the Scrum Alliance and uh, providing the Certified Agile Leadership Training Level 1 and Level 2. Um, and that, then, that'll, yeah, the, just with an update that we realize that we're not really doing Certified Agile Leadership Training and we never have. And so for us it's labeling our course according to its name, which is Leading Evolutionary Organizations. It's probably the most succinct title for what we're actually giving. We're giving leaders the capability so that they are able to not just lead, but support the movement towards an evolutionary organization. Mm -hmm. So we will be providing certified evolutionary leadership badges. Yeah, so people um, have a choice. Through our that. own organization, as well as they have a choice. They can be with Scrum Alliance, or they can uh, take the certification um, um, from our from our organization, but I think um, as far as like having your organization um, be funding your leadership journey and your your training uh, and your education, that um, the certification, the badges are are kind of needed for that. Yeah. So that's why we have it. Yeah. So that's Not, we don't really care about. That's our level level one um, <laughs> yeah. offering. We're also offering uh, Cal two worldwide in person. Uh, I think there's even the North American ones residential, which will have extra bonus stuff. The residential Cal 2 is going to be here, yeah. here in our home. Yeah. First um, ever worldwide. We've never done yeah. a residential before. We were going to do a residential and then COVID happened yeah. and it was going to be in a monastery know, in, in, in Belgium. Belgium. So hopefully maybe we'll still do that. Monday. Uh, yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. Really um, but the next European one will be in London, so we're you know, excited with and, our And the reason why we decided to do that is we've been doing residential um, our, for our academy is as a residential blah, 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 residential program, and we really love uh, the personal connection in the residential um, the residential space. So um, uh, having a Cal two residential is something really, really special. And um, I'm really excited to have that. Yeah. I just so, got really excited. Yeah, I know, it's really good. Yeah, so for those of you who completed your Cal, Cal 1 or Cal EO, or you know, um, really, you know, you've gotten the starter kit, but the, the Cal 2 is really where you start to get the, the, the deep work of understanding alignment, listening for alignment, creating alignment, all these things that we actually need to do beyond the red list, green list to actually manifest and create changes. Playbooks, crucial conversations, yeah. facilitation, facilitating yeah. uh, workshops, like all of that yeah. is, uh, is, is put yeah. into the, into the, yeah. into the So if you are, if you then. are in a situation where you are creating change, you are working to help people and organizations create outcomes, which is pretty much everybody, then that's a really important step in um, mastering this body of knowledge we've created called the cell framework. Um, so then beyond that, we're two more things. One is we have the Academy of Evolutionary Leadership, which we did one here in October and it was off the charts. This is I think the third time we've run it. And this time was like, I'd say probably almost twice as good as the one we did last year. So it like the work is evolving it's the third rapidly. Time in, in a year and a half, but we've is done, it? yeah. We started doing the Academy in 2018. 
Yeah. Residential. I was counting level one. Anyway, it doesn't matter. <laughs> Sidetrack. Anyway, so yeah. so yeah, so so and um, and instantly beyond that, immediately following. Oh, so actually, yeah, academy. So we're running our first ever academy in uh, Australia. Australia. Yeah. yeah, somewhere along the residential, somewhere along the Gold Coast. So oh my god, excited. in a beautiful, yeah. beautiful home. It's on the website if you want to see uh, the venue. Yeah, beautiful property. Yeah, so that's super exciting. And then beyond that, we're doing our. We finally gotten a level one training that other people can teach. And so this is the new training, which is much more practical. So we have our train the trainer program, which immediately follows the academy. Um, and this is really kind of realizing our, our ambition of giving you the opportunity and the tools to really shift culture quickly in a material way. And what do I mean by that? I mean, for years, people coming to us to say, how do we get the leaders to shift? How do we get them to change their culture? And we've given everyone what we could from a, uh, a, a level one, level two perspective of this work, where we're giving you the way to create a better environment. We're giving the way to model more evolved behaviors. And we're giving you those capabilities to create that, that shift. But really, the most powerful shift that and way that we have to, to create a shift in culture is to give people a training experience and support them through coaching and support and integration and application. So this, the train the trainer, we're really excited because we're actually giving people what they've been asking for for many, many, many years. And uh, just to let you know, the train the trainer, the prerequisite is uh, for most people, Cal 2 and as well as Academy Episode 1. And the reason for that is the train the trainer itself is not about, oh, let's go through the content, blah, 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 blah. It's really all about how you hold the space energetically. What are all the, the secret things that Audrey and I do to make the training super effective so you understand and can do those things? That's why the Academy is the prerequisite because you need to understand energy how your energy field operates, how you're holding the class the energetically. The technology to shift consciousness. You when need we to be talk about mindset behavior shifts, there's actually a technology that's, that's baked into our training that helps you get that permanent behavioral shift in a very rapid way. Right. And I, I know a lot of you have taken the class and you're like, <clears throat> oh my God, you know, like this is incredible. There's we will be teaching that in the train the trainer program that I think that will it's kind of like when we say you know when we teach a cow we take a cow and so I think that's one of the benefits is that your personal evolution that um, that is kind of harnessed into the foundation of your being is going to be accelerated with the train the trainer program. Yeah, so, so we're really excited about that because it's kind of like it's kind of like accelerated evolution um, with the ability to actually become a trainer and train your own courses and and make some money at the same yeah, time. Earn a living. Yeah. Earn a living. Yeah, yeah that's really a. A passion of ours is how can we help you guys be successful like yeah that's so really yeah. yeah so that's if we go back that's a big news item for 2023 is having um, completely refactor a level one training to be based on leading beyond change and have it something that other people can teach and having had a whole year to tune it and tweak it and streamline it and optimize it so so yeah we're super excited we're we don't know who it'll be uh, we have some people we've been talking to that are thinking about attending but we're just delighted because we can only change the world together. And Audrey and I can only go so far, be so far. And what we need to do together to change the world is to raise the water level of all of us. So we've been doing that through training. Now we're going to give people you know, very you know, advanced training through the academy and also give people access to train the trainer so that they can do that as part of their work. So people can train, consult, and really give people the tools to build evolutionary organizations, really make a material shift in what's happening that um, we're hoping will start like a, a fire around the globe of, oh wait, there's a different way to do things that actually works and mm -hmm. actually creates a shift. I think um, the other thing, like, like we're talking a lot about, about the courses, but I think it's really important for us because um, we've, been, we've been trying to harness like what we do who we are, what we do, how we do it, and then how to bring it to, 
to everyone. So everyone can have the evolutionary acceleration that we have and be effective to, um, and have the capabilities to evolve their organization. So I think one of the, one of the newer um, pieces is that, and, and it shows up in the academy, is that we have three pillars to our work and that's evolutionary leadership, we have emotional science and we have evolutionary energetics. So we're coming at our training in this very um, expansive way where we're not only looking at the practical aspects of evolutionary leadership and building evolutionary organizations, we're looking at emotional aspects of the human being and how to quickly and effortlessly uh, mitigate the the damage so you can make choices that are healthier and then we're coming at it from an energetic standpoint and a lot of you um, know that um, I'm trained as as an energetic healer I've worked on a medical team for five years um, I and I've been doing like massive amounts of, of training and initiations into um, the technologies um, that shift consciousness. And so we're bringing that in. Like that's, yeah. that's our secret yeah. sauce. People, some people go like, who are really scientific are going like, well, energy, yeah, that's woo woo. I don't really believe in that. Well, I'm just gonna give you an Frequency. equation you may know. E equals MC squared. Energy. Everything, everything that's happening is governed by energy. It's governed by quantum fields. It's governed by the unified field. And in a Western scientific perspective, we don't really look at that or understand how that relates to per individual to interactions in group contexts. And so that's when you know we're breaking out of the traditional worldview. You know, often very very locked down by scientific science on a very limited perspective of the human experience to a much more expansive one that gives us much more power and capability. So that's that's where it's it's kind of like you know I call it the weird stuff that works. Like because I, I was trained as an engineer. So. Well, and and it's like the next evolution of humanity is consciousness. Like everybody is talking about this and. We've been integrating all of this into our, our courses um, since we've met. And um, that's why people get headaches, that we wake up at night. That's why some people can't sleep. That's but why that's blah, why blah, you, blah, blah. how you get the actual behavior shifts. That's, that's why, why people feel like their brains are melting in <laughs> class. Like, you know, this is, this is really what's going on. Yeah. And so we're, we're finally actually talking about it. Talking about it and, um, and feeling like it's imperative that we start to integrate this into, into our work. So I've developed evolutionary energetics since 20, um, 2009, uh, yeah, 2009. And, um, and, and so we're gonna be teaching it in, in the academy and we're really, we're really excited about that. Yeah. I'm, I'm kind of nervous about it, but we've already taught it. So it, you know, we've already done it. So, and it went well. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I guess what I'm feeling right now is just a lot of excitement and, you know, this, for me, this, this video is like an invitation. So if you want to connect, if you want to talk, if you want to get involved in some way, you're not sure, please reach out. If you're and, excited uh, about the possibilities for- Oh my gosh, the possibilities. The possibilities on this planet for humanity and how you can be a part of, of bringing peace and harmony to the world um, and, and doing it in a, in a really grounded way where in your organization, in your personal life, I think that um, we, we would love for, for us to, to be part of that journey and help support you in any way that we can. So, so um, that's our message of peace and hope for this time of year. It's our holiday world peace message. Blah, blah, blah. World peace starts with us. World peace or world peace? World peace. World peace. I don't know what world peace are. I do. I had them in... But they're probably pretty good. I had them in Ireland for okay. the very first time. Very good. All right. Well, thank you so much, everyone. Um, really have appreciate great... you staying connected with us. And again, reach out if there's anything we can help you with. And have a great, safe, happy holidays with your families. And All right. we'll see you next year. All right. Bye-bye, everyone. Bye-bye. It's a wrap. Very good. Okay. You happy? Mm -hmm. Me too. I think we need to I slice like it up a little bit and, and knock off some of Like if we can do some slicing and dicing in the, uh, in the iMovie thing.